Now we're going to take you down to New Orleans, Louisiana, the home of our special guest, Harry Connick Sr. We hope you enjoy the interview. Ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor to welcome our very special guest, the one and only Mr. Harry Connick Sr. Thank you so much for inviting me into your home and letting me do this interview with you. You're very welcome. Who is Harry Connick Sr.? Well, I was a by professional lawyer. I was the, the district attorney in the city of New Orleans for 29, 29 years. And I had been a legal aid attorney before that, and before that an assistant United States attorney. But somewhere along the line, that, that ever-present desire to sing cropped out from time to time, but nothing professionally. Uh, while I'm a lawyer and, and, and I practice law, and I was a federal, I mean a federal and a state prosecutor, uh, I still love to listen to music and to sing. So. I guess I'm like many, many other people. I have various interests and different interests, but two of them are, are law and politics and, and, and music, popular music. Where were you born? I was born in Mobile, Alabama, March the 27th, 1926. My mother and dad were from Mobile. My grandparents were from Mobile, except before that we had some people from Ireland who were our ancestors. But when I was two years old, my dad, who was working at that time for the United States Corps of Engineers, was transferred from, from Mobile to New Orleans. He brought my mother and my older brother and my younger brother and myself over. So we've lived in New Orleans since 1928. Can you remember some of the early records that you listened to that you especially liked? Glenn Miller, I guess. But, you know, before that even, we, I used to hear things on the radio and uh, Bing Crosby and, and uh, Rudy Valley. And some people, I don't, I don't even remember who they were specifically, but uh, Russ Morgan, uh, his band, and uh, Guy Lombardo used to play on uh, New Year's Eve from uh, the Astoria Hotel, the ballroom in the Astoria Hotel in New York City. What I really remember vividly, I guess, was Glenn Miller, some of his his music and uh, Moonlight Cocktail and In the Mood and things like that. And, uh, and of course, Benny Goodman, I guess, uh, the Dorsey Brothers, and things that they did, Pine Top, Boogie Woogie, and things like that. And then the Warriors came, and I, I remember that Harry James became very prominent, and he had some good singers with him, Dick Hames was one of the singers, and Frank Sinatra for a short while even. And Helen Forrest was his vocalist, and you had uh, Ray Everly uh, with the uh, Jimmy Dorsey band, and Helen O'Connell sang with him. They did a lot of duets. Then Glenn Miller, they had the different bands, had their singing groups, the Pied Pipers and the Modern Airs. I didn't know it at the time, but the songs that, that appealed to me, uh, I guess, uh, were also written for the war epic that was going on at that time were written by uh, Sammy Kahn. The lyrics were written by Sammy Kahn. I mean, they still still play them and people still record them, but the war years, too, you have to remember that they were writing music for the war, for the people at home and actually in combat and overseas. Songs like Praise the Lord and Pass the Ammunition <laughs> and Don't Sit Under the Apple Tree with Anyone Else But Me. Kiss Me Once and Kiss Me Twice and Kiss Me Once Again. It's been a long, long time. And things like that. I remember those. And then I remember particularly a song. I was living in Atlanta at the time because my father had been transferred there during World War II. He was stationed in Atlanta before they sent him overseas. Louis uh, Jordan and his Timpany Five had a song called Ration Blues. And rationing in World War II was <laughs> what affected everybody. I'm not kidding you. Gasoline and automobile tires and meat, steak and beef steak, butter and all of the automobiles, you couldn't get them anymore. And anything made with rubber or metal was, was rationed. And out of that came a song by Louis Jordan and his Timpany Five called uh, Ration Blues. I used to sing it when I would do some of my shows, but it goes, baby, baby, baby. What's wrong with Uncle Sam? 
He's cut down on my sugar. Now he's messing with my ham. I've got the ration blues. I'm blue as I can be. And things like that. And then you had uh, Boogie Woogie Bugle Boy. The Andrews Sisters did that. So that was very much ingrained in me when I was a kid. But Because the only thing, uh, we never saw those people. And we only heard them. And the big medium, of course, was radio. I would glue my ear to my, I had a radio in my room when I was in high school. And when I was younger, I used to get home in time, listen a little off an Annie and some of these serials that used to run on a daily basis. But after a while, I got a little bit older and I started to get home to listen to the Chesterfield show. I think Harry James was on that and Benny Goodman had a show. And the different big bands were very much in demand for radio time. Records were still 78 RPMs. And in fact, I, I, I used to buy them. I had no phonograph, <laughs> but I would, buy, I would buy them, and I would buy the uh, the books that they used to sell. They used to sell a song book, they called them, and they would have the, all of the so- popular songs of the day in it. And, uh, and I'd buy those, and I'd listen and look up the song when I would hear it on the radio. So I had a great, great love and fascination for big bands, and for singers and such as that. I liked other music too, but in coming from New Orleans, I think I heard blues uh, all of my life. Uh, we lived in a, an integrated neighborhood. I, I lived on Plum Street. The street behind us was Oak Street, and part of that was uh, not part of it, a lot of it was occupied by black folks. We would hear their music, especially on Saturday night. There was no air conditioning in those days. This is the 30s. Whatever they played, they played loud, <laughs> and it, it would drip through the neighborhood, and you could hear it, you know. So I, I was exposed to some varying, uh, various kinds of music. You have two recordings uh, available, and you sing a lot of the Tin Pan Alley kind of songs. Mm-hmm. And as far as I'm concerned, of all the songs that have been written, those are my personal favorite. I like them, too. I, I love those kinds of songs. And so I wanted to ask you, do you have a favorite songwriter? Not really. You know, again, growing up in New Orleans, you're exposed to uh, this music. There's a certain sound to most of that music. They're called a street beat. When I, when I started to work about 1990, I think I was 65 then. It's a hell of a time to get started in a, in a singing career, but it came about quite by accident, and if you're interested, I'll tell you, but I was working in clubs in New Orleans at a place called uh, Maxwell's Toulouse Cabaret. I worked there for five years. also worked at uh, Roland von Ternikowski, uh, who is a big fan of Tipitina's. He owns Tipitina's now, as a matter of fact. Uh, he had a club on Decatur Street, and I sang there for five years, a couple of nights a week. Three shows a night. So a lot of people come, tourists come to town, and most of the songs that people play uh, are used to anyway, but but New Orleans songs, or in a New New Orleans style. I I was attracted to that, and it was something that I think had great appeal, but I still liked the, uh, the standards. So I don't know of any particular artist, composer, let's say, I know that I like uh, I like that music. This is very hard for a lot of people to answer, but could you name a favorite song? Well, I tell you, I think it's impossible. <laughs> I've tried to do that, uh-huh. and if I'm listening, if I'm listening to Frank Sinatra sing something, whatever it may have been, you know, that would be my favorite song at that time. And if I play a Dick Hames record. Mamzelle or something like that, that, that that would be my favorite song. And But, you know, it, it's so hard to distinguish the degree of, I guess, acceptance to music. It's so, it's so individual, but I'm fickle as hell when it comes to it comes to t- saying which is my most favorite songs. A song, maybe a song will be my favorite song for some while, but time will pass and it'll be another one. I don't even remember which. I, li- I do like Moonlight Serenade. If it's the, the vocal version of that, Sinatra sang that. Sinatra did so many incredible songs. So did Hames, and so did Crosby, and so did uh, Randy Russell from those days, and those fellas. So it's hard to say. 